Welcome to our latest Take a Seat interview. Um, I'm absolutely delighted that this is one of what will be a programme that we're doing with the University of Dundee's Graduate Apprenticeship program in general um, uh, and you know it, it's it's such a fascinating um, concept well I shouldn't even call it a concept it's way better than that but we're going to talk about what graduate apprenticeships are um, through this series um, and I'm hoping that by the end of it you'll be desperate to get in touch and find out how your business can get involved but at the very heart of our take a seat interviews are just about us hearing about the person that we're talking to and it's brilliant to um, be able to showcase so many different people who, who work in all sorts of different roles across our area. So um, welcome. I'm really delighted that we've got Chi with us, who's um, he's lead IT lecturer um, within the University of Dundee's Graduate Apprenticeship Programme. So you're going to start off um, by just telling us a little bit about you. Um, what do you do? Um, and also, how did your passion for IT develop? Hi Alison, thanks for having me today. Um, so my name is Chi uh, Chionikaba. Um, I am the lecturer for IT software development at the University of Dundee. I am also the programme lead um, as well. Uh, now, before, before I joined the University of Dundee, I was um, uh, a part-time lecturer at Staffordshire University down in Stoke-on-Trent, England, and I was also doing a PhD programme back then. Um, in terms of how my passion for IT developed, it's kind of an interesting one because um, I my first degree had nothing to do with IT. Um, I, my first degree was in applied chemistry, um, and you know there's there's almost no relationship between chemistry and IT, except that you might use some IT software to do some you know chemistry work. But um, I, I just think it was it was something I did not enjoy. Uh, I probably wasn't advised properly. Um, but um, towards the end of my first degree, I found myself really loving to do things on computers. Um, so one of the first things I, I learned to do was um, to build computers from you know components by motherboards, CPUs, RAMs. Um, hard disk drives and, you know, casings and all sorts and put the whole thing together and do some installation and watch it come to life. Um, and I really enjoyed that. I was also doing things like overclocking CPU and doing all those fiddly things on the CPU. And I did enjoy all that stuff. Um, so I, I thought maybe I should take it one step forward. I had someone talk about um, databases, I got interested in that. I took a database course. Um, I learned to use um, Oracle database. And um, I really loved it. I loved it so much. I loved working with SQL and databases. And then I wanted to take it further because uh, the database usually forms the back end of most applications. And I thought, you know, it might be interesting having to do something on a front end where you have to write an application and it talks to a database. Maybe not so much the front end, but maybe some kind of a middle tier thing. And then I was thinking about the language to use or to learn at the time. And then I went into Java and I learned to do Java and things really just kicked off from there. And, and here I am, you know, leading the IT software development program in University of Dundee. Brilliant. I mean, we're 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 go we've got so many questions for you, and I'm so interested in in that IT development side of things because as a as a local place, you know, Dundee and Angus has got so much. Um, there is so much passion for digital, and there are so many roles and jobs and so many companies. But actually, we are we do sometimes hear of a bit of a disconnect between people wanting to go into digital as a career because they're not sure what that means. You know, it could be SEO and, and websites and it could be Java and, and you know, some of the, the kind of app development you've talked about. So I'm hoping we're going to kind of circle back to that a little bit. But anyway, um, I am derailing myself from my questions, which is my usual style. Um, but we're interested, we're talking to everybody uh, and asking many of the same questions. And, and one that I'm, I always love the answer to is when I say, can you tell us what you like best about what you do? And is there a story to that? So what I like best about what I do is the fact that you can 
solve problems with with IT. Um, you know, you write, you, you have a problem, you want to get things done more quickly, you want to get things um, done in a more efficient way. And, you know, you're kind of like thinking about how to go about it. With IT, you can literally solve such kinds of problems. And there's, there's, there's a lot of problems that you can use IT to solve. And it's that problem solving aspect of IT that I really um, like best about what I do. Um, obviously, I'm involved in the teaching and it's it's a really great feeling to to teach people how to be able to use IT to solve all sorts of problems. I mean, we do solve problems within the University of Dundee as well with IT. So, for example, um, as you may know that the, the graduate apprenticeship program is, is slightly run in a different way from the full time program. And then at some point we, 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 we needed a system to, you know, to, to analyze and compute grades. And we used to do this uh, manually because the main system wasn't quite configured to do that. And what we did was we just built one within our, our team. And it's, it's that, it's that, and, and when we built that system, it took the time to compute grades from, from hours to literally seconds. And that's how, that's the kind of um, that's what I really like best about what I do. You can use IT to solve problems and you teach people to use IT to solve problems as well. So it's, it's really interesting. I do love that because as a, a business owner, you know, it, it, strategy is what you're interested in, isn't it? And, and you, you can't without the people to help you bring in these kind of digital transformations, then it can be very, very difficult to see where you can make um, such, you know, amazing changes and, and what difference it can make. Um, so, yeah, that's that's fabulous, isn't it? If, if uh, the programme that you're involved in then is encouraging that type of thinking inside businesses. Um, and yeah. we're, we're obviously going to we're going to come on to the way that the graduate um, apprentice program works um but yeah yeah so so tell us about what led you so you talked about um the 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 work that you were doing in England and then um of course it's probably the sunshine isn't it of Dundee that's that's dragged you here but but apart from that um you know what led you to 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 the a graduate apprenticeship program at the university so one of the things about um, the, the way the, the graduate apprenticeship program runs is that, um, you know, students come in a day, uh, one day in a week, and then they go off to work. And um, in many cases, what they learn at um, uni, they can put into practice at work. So it's the idea of being able to link theory with practice almost to real time. I think that really got me interested in the program. Um, if you think about a standard full time students, uh, student, um, they would, you know, learn for four years and then go off to to work. And then that's only when they can really start to put things into practice, you know, not considering maybe small assignments and stuff. Uh, but with the GA program, um, you can almost immediately start to put the things you learn into practice and start to really create that relationship between theory and practice. And that's so fundamental. Um, and I think that got me interested, being involved in that, the programme that, you know, allows students to, to relate theory with practice almost real time. I think that's really um, interesting. The, the, the other thing I, wanted, I want to say about the, the GA programme, uh, the Graduate Apprenticeship programme, is um, it's great. It's, it's fully funded. It's, it doesn't cost anything to, to employers. Uh, and, and it's, you can anyone regardless of your age regardless of your experience you, you know you can be a part of it so employers can really use this program to develop their workforce um, and as i said at no additional cost um, the other thing you can do as an employer is you can bring in new staff and as i said you know they come into uni they start to learn and they can almost immediately start to make an impact at work because what they're learning they can start to relate with um, practice and start to really put these things into practice and I think for me that's that's very fascinating it's it's one of the key things that got me interested in the whole program we do have five programs available as as you might hear later on um, but um, um, these programs are really really great designed to 
to you know to help um, create an impact in in employers in in companies and I think that's that's really great yeah and of course students come out with no student day either do they so um, no. you know it's it's from from every angle I mean I'm you know I'm as much of an advocate I think as probably you are for this program and, and we, you know if we can't persuade everybody by the time we've done <laughs> this interview then um, maybe me and you should just hang up our boots but <laughs> um, so the interview is as much about um, you with your work hat on as it is just like uncovering a little bit more about what makes you tick as well so we're we're talking to everybody about these questions what is your favorite time of year and why summer and it's interesting because i do like the, the fact that you get longer days and shorter nights uh, when everywhere gets dark it tends to my body just naturally starts to shut down and even when i'm trying to hold on and trying to do things you know, it just it's my body just tells me, oh, it's been dark for like four or five hours. You should go to bed now. And even when I'm trying to control that, my brain just starts to shut down. But what I find during summer is I can stay much longer during summer. I tend to wake up much earlier, 4 a.m. I'm up and I can stay from 4 a.m. to even 10 p.m. without, you know, really feeling tired or anything. So it does help me get more stuff done and also the fact that everywhere is warm you can go out you can socialize and it's it's really great so I would say summer is, is one of the best times my favorite time of the year. Brilliant do you see much difference between um, where you are down in England and and the, the northeast of Scotland is it is it feel very different in terms of that summer? Uh, it, it doesn't I think you know geographically there might be slightly longer days up north here than down in England um, but it does feel the same there's not much of a difference for me um, it, it's it's warmer in England but where I lived in Stoke-on-Trent uh, because of the altitude it wasn't as warm as other other cities around so the the the, the average temperature I think is fairly comparable to what I would call the warmest city in Scotland, which is Dundee. And I'm not kidding about this because when I came for this interview, uh, the interview for my job back in 2017, um, I, I got on a train from Stoke and Trent. I arrived in Edinburgh and it, it felt cold. And I got on another train in Edinburgh and arrived in Dundee and it didn't feel as cold as it was in Edinburgh. And I thought, hang on, the, the weather must have changed. So I had my interview and then I left and it felt OK in Dundee, got, got on a train, got back to Edinburgh and it felt a bit cold. And I was wondering, how is the weather just changing and got back to Stoke and Trent and it just felt the same. So um, for me, there's not much of a difference because the, the weather's comparable, the weather in Dundee is comparable, you know, to, to what I where I used to be in Scotland in, yeah. in England. Yeah. And of course, there's the there's the warmth of the people, isn't there? And I'm a million yes. percent biased because I'm a Dundonian through and through and never quite escaped. But, you know, there there is just something, isn't there, about the, the size of our city. It's compact. Um, you will learn this that you know everybody knows everybody. <laughs> you can't really, you can't really get away from you know people that you know. But actually, it's just a really friendly city, and I I think you know um this is not a it's not a tourism video, but there's just something about the the outlook of the city onto the water, and obviously the universities a part of of that kind of cultural quarter. There's just you know, we've just got a really big, lovely sky and a and a beautiful river to be by, don't we? So, yeah, yeah. Um, we have been in in lockdown again in in these first few months of of the year, and and we spoke before we were recording this about kind of the darkness of January. And I think you know, I think the way that I probably experienced January sounds very similar to the opposite of what you've just said about the summer. You know, the, the darker days, we've not been out and about much. Um, and so you're not even getting a chance to kind of experience a different place to work in during the day, are you? Um, but we're coming out of, of restrictions, so, you know, slowly but surely we've got a bit of a plan. Um, but what is the thing that you're missing most during lockdown? Um, so from a work perspective, I would say um, 
the the ability to have quick conversations with colleagues um, because we've all been working from home and you know sometimes it's easier to you know ask questions or to provide explanations or answers to colleagues and um, when you're physically in the same office compared to having to write up an email or try and arrange a teams meeting and I feel you know there's a you know you can get things done a little bit faster if you're in the same building with the people that you work with also being able to interact with students um, kind of like in close proximity and you know provide help assistance in lab settings that we we used to use before the lockdown I think that's um that's something I miss because it's I, I think it's a bit more effective than having to do things over uh, video. Um, outside of work, I, I miss seeing friends and family. I haven't been to any friend's house since the lockdown and it just feels like it's such a long time. I, I, I do want to I do have friends around friends in Glasgow. I want to go out and meet friends. Um, as you probably can guess, I have a family in England. We do love staying in Scotland, so we are committed here. My wife doesn't want to leave, um, but we have family in England and uh, we, we used to visit them at least once a year, but we've not been able to do that. In fact, in some cases, twice a year, we will drive down to England, but we've not been able to do that. So I think that's these are the things I'm missing uh, about the restriction. I really look forward to the, re the restrictions coming to an end um, obviously in a safe way yeah yeah um and i mean i guess you know we've we've talked a lot about the the graduate apprenticeship program you and i are definite um cheerleaders for it that's for sure but it, it's it is a a brilliant thing for employers as you already said you know you can either choose to bring somebody new into your your business and they can join up and do their studies or you can upskill and, and kind of support internally for um, people to kind of develop their careers and uh, you know there is no upper age limit and uh, it's just such an interesting program but what kind of feedback are you getting from employers about it? So um, many of the employers we work with are really pleased to see that within the short period of time in many cases um, that the apprentices are really starting to make an impact. They are really starting to get actual job done. So we have an, uh, you know, we, we, one of the employers we worked with, um, you know, you know, get, said to us that his 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 employee, the student who, who the, the apprentice, you know, is he feels so comfortable allowing the apprentice only after about eight, I think a year and a half or two of, of being with us. Um, feel so comfortable allowing the apprentice to really take on core projects um, for clients and he's, he's, he was so pleased to say that the apprentice is doing such a fantastic work and they're really really happy about it so I think the key the key feedback that we get is that within a very short period of time um, um, employers are finding that the apprentices are able to make an impact of of the same level, or in some cases, even much, much better than a, a full time, um, a graduate em employee, you know, like someone who's been to uni for four years and has come out and is already starting their world of work. So it's that impact happening within a short period of time that, you know, we're really, that's really coming back to us as feedback from, from employers. I, I think it's, um, it's really great to hear that. Brilliant. And what about the apprentices? What what do what are their experiences like? So the apprentices love it. They, you know, they love the fact that you know they are they they are building their career right from um, you know the go um, without having to wait till till they graduate. They love the fact that they can you know contribute to work in a meaningful way and in, and and in an impactful way very very early in their career they love the fact that they can learn and immediately relate that to to practice in the industry uh, they really love that so that's that these are some of the the the, um, the feedback we're getting from students i mean that that very much mirrors our experiences because the chamber has um glenn in our team who's uh, doing a graduate apprenticeship in business and and from the very beginning well 
and partly I think because he was with us as a foundation apprentice, we were used to helping or or kind of look at the projects that he was working on inside the the work setting and relating them to the things that he was having to learn because if, less so for for what he's doing with his graduate apprenticeship but from a foundation apprenticeship you have to evidence um, and be able to kind of say well I've learned this about communication or I learned that about team working um, so when when Glenn started um, with his GA studies we sat down or I sat down with him um, as his kind of employer and said okay what are the subjects that you're currently studying mm -hmm. and do we need to help you get experience of, of different things across all of our team that will help you learn how the, the theory is is put into practice how it actually works in the workplace um, and, and that so I think he's definitely found that helpful because it's you know for example some of the political studies he was looking at you know from a, a kind of a global business context or or learning about the the policy and the influence in work we do you know he's found that really useful but as you said from you know the taking his learnings into the work he's doing he's definitely you know helping us looking at our our marketing and our strategy and just you know the the, the way that we're managing different projects he's learning an awful lot and it's having direct relevance on on the work that he's doing within our team so um yeah hugely hugely valuable for us as the employer it's important to invest in young people um and it, and it's really kind of helping him um and and in i mean it's not that new is it well it's i guess because i'm quite old to me it's very like the old day release um experience that there was a long 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 time ago when mm. when people would have worked and, and kind of done studying on the side in fact it's how i got one of my qualifications um so so yeah and and you've talked about your your first intake are about to graduate aren't they this year yes yeah, that's right. yeah, yeah, and that that must be that that must be really like something that's so heartening to kind of have watched their progress. In fact, one of our students I know um, has already with the company he works with has already got a permanent role, uh, just pending the result, the, the, the his degree, um, and it, it just goes to show how much of an impact he is making, how happy his employers um, are with him and and the fact that they they've considered this to to have worked out in the end because i think for us the fact that you can transition from being uh, an apprentice to being a full-time employee at the end of the program even before the end of the program like certainly as is it, as is the case here i think that's that's a success story for us and we, we are really pleased about that definitely uh, and and you know that that for me is the has to be at the root of of what happens you know we need to make sure that the young people are transitioning into really good employment roles as a result of the investment they've made in themselves and and you know that the employers have been able to make in them too so yeah that's that's really great and um, i'm always interested in in kind of you know the the different aspects that every one of our people that we interview kind of brings and so we do ask we're we've got a few questions that we we kind of drill in um into every interview and this one is always an interesting one so uh I, we, we're we're keen to hear what's the best piece of advice you've ever received uh and why so i would say um um, my dad will always say to me, you know, what what new thing have you learned? What new thing have you learned? And so I'll bring that into um, self-development or you can think of it as continuous professional development. And I would say, you know, that, that I think that's a good advice I've received, you know, to, to continue to develop yourself and to continue to learn new things. And, you know, you might think what you're learning is a waste, but I, I I genuinely believe that no knowledge is a waste. It may not be directly applicable to what you do, but in some way it can be indirectly applicable. Um, so that would be one of my best piece of advice because it's it's something that would continue to build you up as an individual, continue to obscure you and to prepare you for all the um, um, difficulties that life would throw at you, um, both at work, and in your progression, in your career, and in all aspects of life. 
Yeah, that's that's brilliant. And of course, that yeah, it's making me smile because one of my favourite sayings is every day is a school day. And it's not always, um, you know, it's it can sometimes be a bit of a pessimistic dig because actually it just sometimes highlights that you don't you didn't really know that thing and you've just learned it. But it's also it's it's the on purpose nature of that, isn't it? Being aware that you've learned something new um, and and that's uh, yeah it's absolutely uh, really important isn't it to uh, the you know we've got a, a member of the chamber that talks about uh, growth mindset versus fixed mindset and and to me you know that's inextricably linked to looking to continue to grow to be keen to learn um, and then you know put that into practice whether it's about a personal skill uh, and that's about your personal journey or whether you're kind of doing it from a, a work-based point of view. Yet yeah, I would be, um, I'm I'm behind you all the way and in, in just encouraging people to continue to learn as much as possible. Um, because, you know, it improves your bankability as much as anything. Um, uh, and it keeps, it keeps things fresh. Um, so yeah, uh, we've we've talked we've talked a bit about lockdown and restrictions and and kind of what. Um, so I, I'm not going to. Uh, I wonder if I know the answer to my next question, which is when we're more freely able to get out and about. Where's on your lockdown escape bucket list? So I want to see family. Um, I will, you know, I, when I can, I will be travelling to England to see family once we can. Um, but beyond that, uh, we were planning to go to the Scottish Highlands last year, um, my family here. Um, but before we were able to put anything concrete in place, the lockdown happened in March. We were planning that for July last year. And, you know, to visit, you know, Inverness, Loch Ness and all those the, the places around. And we never could go. So um, once we can, uh, we would be looking to go that it may not be this year because what we would want to do is to see family first but once we can we will so if not possible this year then certainly next year we will be going there yeah. so the first place obviously would be to see family and then to to visit the places that we wanted to visit such as the Scottish Highlands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's so beautiful up there as well and I think you know Dundee we, we pride ourselves I think as a city that we're not far from any place that you could possibly want to get to and of course I'm always plugging that from a work point of view because yeah you know from a logistics and business point of view and a business connections you can just as easily get to people in Glasgow and Edinburgh as you can kind of to your your customers north but um like you you know uh, well we've taken lots of holidays up there we took my son up there um you know often for short breaks and the beaches um around about so if you go to Inverness um on the coast towards Aberdeen is um, a few really gorgeous places near and, and um, others and they've got they've got such a microclimate of sunshine up there I mean I'm not going to tell you too much because you know Dundee is the sunniest city and we're yeah. kind of hanging on to that but <laughs> but it's beautiful up there palm trees the works and you you sort of kind of get out of the car and go right what where, what just happened here how can it be this warm and tropical like <laughs> and it's it's you know it's the tropics in a Scottish connection but yeah, yeah. it's pretty nice all the same um, I, I'm uh, and I, I you know very much hope that you get to 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 kind of connect with family and and then it'll be friends on the way north back won't it <laughs> um we're, we're also um you know back to some of these trickier questions and I know these ones at the end tend to be a little bit tricky but this is this is an interesting one so if you had a message for people out there about the things you've learned yourself about the world of work and business what would it be? Uh, I think my the first word I would say would be perseverance um, just persevere at what you do um, believe in what you do persevere at it don't give up um, you know, that would apply to, you know, apprentices. That would also apply to employer, um, employees, sorry, employers who, who are, you know, obviously have a business to run. Um, uh, particularly for, for employers, I would say invest in your staff because when you invest in your staff, it comes, I'm not, talk, I'm not just talking about, you know, in, increasing pay, giving pay rise or stuff. I'm talking about things like, continuous professional development, you know, giving them the opportunities to develop themselves, things like the graduate apprenticeship program, 
um, because then it all comes back to the company in the sense that they can make even more impact in the company, at, you know, into, at work. And then obviously that would improve in some way, directly or indirectly, the bottom line of, of the of the organization. And, you know, just self-development, really, I think that would be a good advice because each time you develop yourself, you learn something new, you, you get better at what you do, and it just wraps around to to be more beneficial to to work, to business and and, and personally as well. Yeah, fab. And, and and just as we're kind of wrapping things up, so um, a little birdie tells me that you've got an IT event coming up. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about what that is and how people sign up? So uh, uh, during the IT event, uh, we're going to be covering, going into details about the, the IT programs that we offer. Now, the one thing I would like to say is um, over the last year, we've seen an increase in the use of IT because of the pandemic, people working more from home, people relying a lot more on technology now. And I think now's the time more than ever that people really need to start to embrace IT at, at their workforce or at their workplace and um, start to really train um, their employees uh, to be able to do IT um, and also to be able to, um, you know, use IT to, to solve problems. And I think um, now would be the time to learn about these kinds of programs that we offer, the IT management, the IT software development. So during that event, we'll be going into details about the program, how it's organized, what you can expect from the program. And um, you not only hear from me, you're going to hear from other people involved. So, for example, you'll be hearing from um, the industrial liaison officer, Wayne Paul. Uh, you also hear from other lecturers on the on the program and beyond that we're going to have some employees um so some apprentices and some employers as well who are going to talk about the experience um using the program or being a part of the program so you're going to hear firsthand from the people who are already in the program and and anyone who wants to join um can easily register for it by searching graduate apprenticeship um events dundee there is a link, it's www.dundee.ac.uk forward slash graduate apprenticeships, graduate dash apprenticeships forward slash events. And that's where you can sign up for, for the programme. So I would encourage anyone who's watching this video to attend because we're going to go into all the details about the programme. You hear from other people involved, including staff who are teaching on the program, such as myself, you hear from the industrial liaison officer, Wayne Paul, you would hear from other employers who are, um, who've got employees on the program, and you will hear from apprentices um, as well. So that's what we are going to be offering. So by all means, um, attend the program, and we will take questions as well. So you may, following on from this video, you might have questions. Uh, we will be taking your questions at the event as well. So I would encourage anyone watching this to attend. Brilliant. Uh, and we will share this video on our YouTube channel and on our social media, and we'll make sure to kind of put the link in into the comments yes. and, and the posts on that as well. Um, and I, yeah, I, I would I would just say the same as you, I guess, you know, people should um, think about this as a, a real core skill and competency within their businesses. And, you know, we've seen government support and funding for digital infrastructure digital um you know investments in businesses um and sometimes a business will kind of jump on some funding without there being a strategy behind it or a real champion to kind of drive it through their business and make sure that it's having the right impact and and that businesses are embracing it in the right ways internally so yeah, it's absolutely the right time to think about getting somebody inside the business and investing in them. But not just that, but making sure that they I mean they're coming to you to get these cutting edge skills and and kind of theory that would really transform businesses. So, yeah, it, you know, there's there is absolutely no reason not to and certainly not to come along to the event and just listen to those 
um, real life experiences of how people have found it. So, yeah, thank you so much for, for your time today. I um, really thank look you. forward to that event that you've got um, and look forward to kind of supporting the programme as much as we possibly can. Um, so, Chi, thank you so much for your time um, and for, for taking the, the time to come on and tell us a wee bit about you and what goes on in your world of work. I thoroughly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. Thank you.